everybody and welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Rosemary and I am a crafter and a sculptor and a sewer. And recently what I've been doing is that I have been doing some classes on your brother sewing machine. Um, I do work in a sewing machine store and I have been trying to help a lot of my students. So if you're one of my students or somebody who's purchased an embroidery machine recently, I hope this class can be very helpful for you to be able to use your embroidery machine. Before we actually start to um, embroider, I want to go over a few things about stabilizing. Stabilizing is probably the most important thing that you are going to learn when it comes to using your embroidery machine. If you don't stabilize properly, your embroidery will not come out good and you won't be happy with it. So one of the first things is just a basic tear waste stabilizer. And they usually put that in your machine for you to practice a little bit. It works great on just basic cotton fabrics that you can use um, and then there's another one that's called um, stitch and wash and I like stitch and wash a lot and I wish um, I could have you actually come in and touch it and feel it it's actually made with the regular tear away but they embed a wash away stabilizer into it so when I wet this it will literally fall apart and come off of my um, fabric a lot easier so that I don't have to sit there and pick, pick, pick and pull out little tiny pieces of paper, especially if my design has a lot of open parts to it, like lettering. So, because you don't want any paper left on the back most of the time. If I'm doing it on a jacket or a quilt, um, a little tiny little, little pieces of paper aren't going to make that much difference. But if I'm doing it on something like a towel, I probably don't want a bunch of little pieces of paper still on the back of my towel that's going to show. Or even worse, if I'm doing it on a white blouse that's kind of see-through, you don't want to see little bits of paper behind um, that fabric up against your skin because it'll be very obvious and it won't look good. I still remember years ago seeing somebody who had made a scarf that was made of organza so it was completely see-through and she did this beautiful butterfly but the paper was still on the back of the butterfly and you could see it right through the organza so it didn't look very nice so I like the stitch and wash because it comes off but what's better about the stitch and wash then a complete wash away is that it still stays under the stitches. So it'll help to hold the shape of your stitches um, after it's had to go through the washing machine a few times. So one of the ones things that we want to do when we first get an embroidery machine is we want to do towels. And um, towels are made of terry cloth or velour and they have little fibers that are going to come up through your stitches and make your towel look bad. And I did this little washcloth just to kind of show you that the one on the top with Mickey Mouse had no topping on it at all. And you can see, um, it's very difficult to do this on camera, but you can see that the that Mickey Mouse is not done very good because it doesn't have a topping and I can see the white towel coming through. The next one is a water soluble topping. And a water soluble topping is a topping that is completely dissolvable and it'll say on the package topping so that's what it's made for for you to put across the top of your towel before you embroider it and it's great it does a great job and it stays on, on the um the towel so that it lifts the stitches up uh, yeah that's what i meant so it lifts the stitches up and they don't get buried down inside the terry. But the bad thing is that the more you wash that towel, the more that will dissolve and it will eventually start looking bad. I still remember years ago when I used to make towels, um, when I first started embroidering, is I would hang them in the bathroom and I would tell my family, don't touch this. This is not a towel. This is a decoration for Christmas and that's all it is. It is not to wipe your hands on. It is especially not to dry yourself with or throw it on the floor because then I'm going to have to wash it and it's going to start looking bad. I'm going to have to press out all the stitching and I'm not going to be a happy person. And my family thought I was a crazy lady, but they did what they were told. Well, I still don't like to put uh, towels that have embroidery them in the washing machine that often. But the good news is that if you use a heat and gone, which is what's on the bottom of this one here, you put it across the top, you put that stitch and wash on the bottom, then what happens is when you're done, you can pull all of the heat and gone off 
and then use your iron to make the rest of it melt away. And after it goes into the washing machine, it doesn't dissolve. So it will be permanently underneath your stitching for the uh, life of the towel and it'll always look really nice. And um, you won't have to worry so much about the children or even your husband coming in and using that towel for a towel. It also works really good for dish towels. If you want to use it for a Christmas stocking to put up over the fuzzy part of the Christmas stocking, it's also going to make it work a whole lot better. So that's just a little information about topping. You literally sandwich it between the stabilizers. So you're going to put a piece of stabilizer in your hoop. You're going to put the towel on top of that, and then you're going to use the wash away stabilizer, which is this or the heat and gone stabilizer on top and create a sandwich and then embroider through all three layers. And it's going to come out a little bit better than um, if you didn't use the topping at all. Another stabilizer that's really important for you to start out with when you're first embroidering is this one. This is called No Show Mesh. And I showed that a little bit in my last video on how to do that with t-shirts to put it on the back of the t-shirt first before you start to embroider. And one of the reasons that you want to do that, this is a little t-shirt that I made. And Mickey Mouse is in the middle of it. And you will notice that he doesn't hang very good. He kind of... Um, droops a little bit and it's because I put the no-show mesh in there but I didn't iron it on I just inverted it and I didn't use a topping on it so on this one on this side I ironed it on and then I stuck it to the perfect stick that I showed you in the last video and that prevented me from stretching this while I was on it and I ended up with a much better embroidery. So if you haven't watched that video yet, go back and watch it and I will show you exactly how to hoop up a stretchy t-shirt and you'll be much happier with it, the results in the end. Another thing I always tell people when I teach my classes on stretchy t-shirts is um, if you cover a t-shirt completely in embroidery, it's probably going to look a little bumpy because there's a lot of stitching on a very stretchy piece of fabric. And this is my shirt and it's okay for me, but a lot of times the children don't like it. It's not comfortable. It's kind of itchy. Um, and especially the babies, they're not going to like it because it's not going to be comfortable against their skin. And this one, actually, the stitches are very visible. Um, so a lot of young mothers don't like that against the baby's skin. This t-shirt, which I made years ago, I just put a little embroidery across the top and a little embroidery across the bottom. And that doesn't make the t-shirt uncomfortable. It leaves the stretch in the t-shirt and it's still a pretty little design that I have on my t-shirt. And I'm a bit much happier with this one than I was with the pink one where I tried something a little more intense. Um, Back to this little yellow t-shirt, if you turn this inside out, there is a stuff that's called Dreamweave that you can purchase, that you can, that you can iron over the top of your stitching when you're done, especially if you're doing a baby onesie, and it will be permanent, and it'll stay on the t-shirt for the life of the t-shirt, and it'll cover up those stitches and make moms a lot happier with your onesie. But I still would like to strongly encourage you to not put a lot of embroidery on those little onesies. Keep it simple, a little flower, something that says mommy's baby or something like that on it. But let's not get crazy because it won't be comfortable for the baby. Um, so there's a whole lot of different stabilizers and I really encourage you to um, Google it, look up some other YouTube videos that talk about stabilizing so that you can really understand how it works and that way your um, embroideries will come out really good. Okay, so the first thing when you're doing a t-shirt is you want to make sure that you mark where you're going to do your embroidery. If you do not mark it and it doesn't come out straight, you're going to be very unhappy with it. So get yourself a good acrylic ruler that you can use to, um, to make a straight line against the edge of your t-shirt and an invisible marking pin. So we're going to just mark this in this direction so that I get it straight. And then I'm going to turn it and line that up with uh, 
the last mark that I just made and then I'm going to mark it again. And this is one that a pin that disappears with water. Um, if you use one that's water soluble, make sure that you completely wash it out before you iron over this or it'll make it permanent. Um, you can also use chalk markers, which work really good. And then um, uh, there are those out there that will disappear with an iron. I like those a lot because then I don't have to worry about accidentally setting that permanently on there. So I've made my lines on here. I want to put my design so it lines up right here with that center piece. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to put that sticky stabilizer that I showed you in the last video. And if you didn't watch that one, go back and watch it because you'll learn a lot about how to put it in the hoop and everything. Um, but one of the things I wanted to show you on this one was um, it's very hard to hoop a baby t-shirt. This one is probably a size um, two and then there's even smaller ones, a baby onesie or something. Some people say you can't embroider on baby t-shirts because you can't get them in the hoop. And if you use the smaller hoop, you can't do a bigger design. But you can, you can put it in the hoop. What you're gonna do is you're gonna literally turn this t-shirt inside out like this. So it's inside out and I'm going to stick it on the sticky stabilizer so that my lines are straight. And um, you can use the notches that are on here so that I can put this side of the t-shirt of my line that I made here and make, put this side of the t-shirt on the notch so I line it up. With your machine, you should have gotten a plastic grid that fits in the hoop, you can use that plastic grid. For some reason, I can't find mine, so I'm not gonna have it on there, but you can lay that plastic grid right inside the hoop and make sure that you've got that straight in here. But if I use my notches according to my lines, that's gonna line it up pretty good. Then all I have to do is once I go to put it on the machine is push the back out of the way like this and embroider right on it like that. I have to stay right with my embroidery machine. I can't get up and walk away because this will move and eventually you will have sewn the two layers together. You can pin it back out of the way, but I always stay very close watching exactly what I'm doing when I'm embroidering. Now, the other thing is that if you are, want to do a towel, then we can still use the sticky stabilizer for that. So here is my towel that I was using a few minutes ago. Um, and I'm gonna just take it and I'm gonna lay it on there and I'm gonna smooth it out so the sticky stabilizer holds on to it. This is the heat and gone stabilizer I was talking about before that irons away. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay it across the top and then I can put some pins in it that will hold it down so it doesn't move. Um, I'm also going to show you once we get to the embroidery machine how to um, base that down so it doesn't move and that will work to keep everything from um, stretching or pulling while it's embroidering and hold it on to the stabilizer so nothing moves. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I am going to hoop just a piece of basic white fabric that we can take to our, sew to our embroidery machine and embroider it out. Uh, the one of the most important things that you're going to learn about embroidery is to iron on and they make stabilizers that are called fusible stabilizers. Fusible stabilizers. If you can purchase the one that has an iron on, I would really highly recommend that you do that. But if you don't have one that's an iron on, use the KK2000 and spray it on. It's a temporary adhesive and it will hold it all together for you so that it won't move while you're trying to hoop it and while it's embroidering, it won't stretch and pucker. So before we get started, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this hoop, is I'm gonna show you what I just did on the t-shirt. Same thing, we're gonna use our ruler and we're going to mark it I think my wash away marker has gotten a little old and it's not making a really clean line but I'm gonna line this up so I get a straight line while I'm hooping the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to spray my stabilizer 
see if I can hold this down flat and spray this at the same time. And then I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to lay it over the top of my stabilizer and smooth it down. And that way, when I go to hoop this, I won't stretch out my fabric. That um, is one of the worst things you can do is if you accidentally pull on it and stretch it, then when you take it out of the hoop, it's not going to lay flat and you're not going to be happy with it. Now I'm going to take the top of my hoop and I'm going to use those notches I showed you a minute ago so that I can line this up to make sure that it's straight by lining up with the notches. Then I'm going to pick this whole thing up together and lay it in my bottom hoop. That way I, it won't move and I'll get a straight embroidery. I'm going to push down and this is a drum-like consistency. It's not drooping in any way whatsoever. These little tiny wrinkles in the side are not going to make that much difference because I'm going to put my embroidery right here. The temptation to grab it and pull it is very strong, but if you do that, you will actually spread out your fibers and then the embroidery machine will fill in the blank spots um, where your fibers have been pulled apart and then your design will be too heavy and it won't hang right. So don't do that. If it doesn't lay as flat as you'd like it to, take it out of the hoop, do it again. But make sure it's in there nice and tight. And then you want to just kind of push your hoop down just a little bit like that before you get started. So um, now let's take this embroidery over to our embroidery machine and I'll show you how to add a design and some lettering and do a little bit of editing. So one of the things I forgot to mention when I was showing you how to put this in the hoop was um, make sure that your stabilizer comes all the way to all four corners of your hoop. You probably want about an inch all the way around. I can't tell you how many people over the years that I've been teaching embroidery ha have come into the store for help and they don't have their stabilizer completely in the hoop. They've taken a smaller piece and kind of laid it across the middle and hoped that it would work. This is one time to not be frugal. Make sure your stabilizer goes through the whole hoop so the hoop is gripping your fabric and your stabilizer all together and um, your it's the machine's not going to have the opportunity to pull in on that and make your embroidery not come out right um, so what we're going to do right now is we're going to take it and we're going to slide it in I'm going to move the camera just a little bit here slide it in to the embroidery machine all the way and then lock it down with this lever. Um, if you do not have a lever like this on your machine, if it snaps down into place, just make sure that you feel it click and then it gets completely on your machine so that it doesn't wobble around because we want a nice solid surface to do our embroidery on. Okay, so here's my embroidery screen. All of them are going to be a little bit different. Um, some of the machines are going to have a smaller screen that you're embroidering on, but for the most part, it's going to give you some designs. Um, let me go back to the home button. Um, if it has a, a main screen like this, you want to hit embroidery so that it'll go into your embroidery menus. Each one of these little squares that are on the screen are going to have a menu behind it. So that's where all your designs are going to be is behind it. If you ever start to think you can't find your designs, just touch it and usually it will open up another screen that will put the design on there for you. Once you have chosen a design, you hit set and that will set it down for you. So let's go back. I'm going to go home and go back into embroidery. Um, another thing that you want to make sure that you do before you embroider is if you come up here to the top part right here and hit your 
um, page that looks like a little page with writing and a corner turned down. You hit that. It might be down here on the bottom of your machine, um, but it's going to be on there somewhere. No matter what brother machine you have, you're going to have that emblem. This will allow you to set it up for the right hoop size. Right now, I have this set for 5x7, which is the one I'm using, a 5x7. I can push this and it'll show me all the different brother hoops that will fit on my sewing machine according to the machine you have. If I tell it that I want to do a 5x7 and say OK, then when I put a design on there, let's just go in here. I'm going to put Mickey Mouse on here and push set. This square that's in the middle is telling me the size hoop I want to stay in. If I move this design a little bit outside of that square, my machine is going to tell me to change to a bigger hoop. Even though my design is smaller than a 5x7, I've got it out of my 5x7 hoop. I need to keep it in the 5x7 hoop. I can move it up and down with my finger to put it where I want to put it. Then all I have to do to um, add something to it is hit the word add. And all of the embroidery machines have the word add. You just have to know where it is on your sewing machine. So once I've hit add, I can go back into my menu. I'm going to hit my letters and I'm going to pick a font that I like. So let's just pick this one here. Then um, I'm going to write the word Mickey. So I'm going to hit M. Now that M is really big, and if I write the word Mickey, it's going to run out of my space and it's going to be too big. So what I want to do is I want to change this to a medium font. I can adjust the size again later. It will be fine, um, but for right now I just want to make sure it fits in my hoop. Especially if you've got a machine that will only do 5x7, if it runs out of space, it's going to stop and tell you you can't go any further. So um, you want to start with a little bit smaller. Then I'm going to go to the ABC here so I have my lower case fonts and I'm going to write my word. Now if I want to continue this and put a space in it, Brother has a space button right here that looks like a space. And you hit that, and then I'd have a space so I could write um, Mickey Mouse if I wanted to. I could do that, and I, could, I would have a space between it. If I want to put my name, I can put a space between my name. If I want to delete it, I can hit delete. Now, if you have a sewing machine that has this button on it here, that's a return button. That will allow you to write another word. in two different um, rows and then you can continue to do that if you want to. You can see right here on this machine it actually shows me the um, what I've been writing on here and if I set that down I can move it. Now if I try and hit the edit and size this it won't let me size it and it's because it's two rows of stitching, and that's a little bit frustrating that it'll do that. Um, but all you have to do is, while it's selected, hit the ungroup button. Now I've got two red squares instead of one. In order to separate them, though, I have to touch my screen in any place. And now I have uh, red squares only around the word Mickey. So now they're separate and I can move them around if I really did want them right underneath each other, but I didn't want them quite like that. I can move them around and do like that. If I want to select that now and put it back together again, this button right here, if I hit that, I can hit this one and this one. Now both of those are actually selected. And then if I say OK and go back to the group button, now they're grouped back together again so I can move them together. So there's a lot of different features you can do if you have a Stellaire, a Dream Machine, a Luminaire, um, and some even some of the other machines will allow you to, to, uh, to group and ungroup. Just um, look for that emblem that looks like a square circle and a triangle if your machine has it. If not, I am actually going to delete this. If you don't have that capability, go into um, your add button, hit your letters, 
pick the ones that you want to do. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to write Mickey and I'm going to set it down and I'm going to put the word Mickey where I want it to be. Then I'm going to hit add again and go back into my letters and find them. And then I'm going to do the second one. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back and make it medium and um, lowercase. And then I'm going to set that down. So now I've got Mickey Mouse. Each one of them are separate. Now I can size the letters by tapping them, hit edit and size, and I can make that any size I want it to be, as long as it fits in my hoop. Unfortunately, I cannot size Mickey Mouse because um, it just has to do with the contract with Disney that won't allow you to size Mickey Mouse. Um, if I hit add and go in here and um, let's just hit this one and pick this one here and set that down. I'm going to size this. I keep forgetting to use my stylus, which works a whole lot better because then my hand's not in the way. Um, so now I have another design in here um, that's in the machine. If I hit size on this one while it's selected, I can go... Um, out 20% and in 20%. If I have um, a machine that allows for this button right here, which is probably just on the Dream Machine, the Stellaire, and the Luminaire, um, you're going to hit that button. It's going to say, OK, reset. And you say, OK, now I can actually size that up 200%. I can make it as big as I want it to be or as small as I want it to be. Always take into consideration if you do that, that if you make that too small, it might not sew out very good. Even if it's reduced the stitches of the design, if it's too close together or there's too much detail in that, it's not going to sew out very good. This design um, has pretty little detail and it's just some satin stitching but if I did something as complicated as maybe a kitty cat um, when it got really small the whiskers and the eyes would start to look really bad so just you know think about all the detail that's in the design before you size it really small or sew it out on a piece of scrap and see what it actually looks like when you get all finished with it um, I'm actually going to um, delete this one because I don't want it in my design so I'm going to put Mickey Mouse. Oh, I also wanted to show you. So if you select your letters and you go under the edit tool, um, this has a T. Some of the machines actually will say uh, edit font. Um, but if you go into your edit font, you should have a button that says array. And the array button will allow you to curve your design. And then you can actually curve it big or curve it small. I'm going to put it back on a straight and um, just make it nice and big. Okay, so let's go back under the T and the array and curve it so you can actually see that it's curved. Excuse me. <coughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so <coughs> so you can kind of play around with your letters a little bit and see some of the different things you can do with it. I'm going to put it back straight again. Say okay. So there's another part of um, your machine that says spacing, and it will allow you to space those letters out and pull them out a little bit. And... Um, some of your machines are going to have a button that looks like this that will allow you to pick the knife. Move the knife wherever you want it to be. 
in your word and then hit the knife. Now I have literally cut the word Mickey. Actually, I cut it into three parts. I didn't even realize I did that. So you could do something like that if you wanted to do that with it. So that's a, a little bit a uh, fun thing to do. Unfortunately, if you cut them, it's kind of hard to get them to go back together again. So. Okay, so remember I told you I was going to show you how to baste your um, uh, the heat away stabilizer onto your hoop so that you can put that on top if you're doing towels or something. I'm going to show you there's two different ways you can do it. Some of the machines, after you hit embroidery and you're ready to embroider, are going to have a button in the layout that just says baste and it will literally add a basting stitch onto it. It's very easy to do, but not all of us have that feature. So I'm going to hit return and delete that. Um, so one of the things that you can do is if you go in into your add button and your menus, there should be something that looks like this. Hit that and hit a square. And this very first one on there is going to put three rows of basting stitches around your design. So I'm going to hit set and it's smaller than my design. But if I hit edit, this is one of the exceptions that are in your machine that you can size it as big as you want to make it. So I can push this out so it's as almost as big as my hoop and then I can stretch it out this way. So now it is um, as big as my design and that's what I want it to do. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit OK and I'm going to hit embroidery saying I'm ready to embroider it. It's the last thing I put on there so it's showing that it wants to sew Mickey Mouse's eyes first. What I want to do is I want to hit this plus and minus sign that's down here and that's going to allow me to plus and minus um, a lot of your machines are going to have a picture of a spool, like a spool of thread on it instead of a, a narrow down and narrow up. Hit the spool of thread <clears throat> so it says minus and it'll take you to this first step here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to embroider it. Okay, so here's my embroidery hoop on my sewing machine. And I'm actually going to pull this a little bit forward so we can see a little more. And here is my heat and gone stabilizer that I told you about. I'm going to lay it across the top and smooth it down. Now I'll push this back and lock it in place. I've got black thread in here. It doesn't really matter the color. Um, white might be a little bit easier, but I want you to be able to see it. So I'm going to hit the down button and hit go. I'm going to hold this thread out of the way so that it doesn't wrap around my needle and cause issues and as I said before this is actually going to embroider three times around I don't want it to sew three times because I don't want to rip it out if it does it three times so I'm just going to let it sew that a straight running stitch all the way around one time and then I'm going to hit stop and cut And that's enough to hold my stabilizer onto my fabric and my other stabilizer. And not only does it hold it together um, the, for the top, but it actually sews all three pieces together. So when it starts to embroider my design, it's not going to be able to pull it in. And I will get a better design that doesn't have any puckers in it. Even though I did use a spray or an iron-on, this is even going to help a little bit more. And it just takes a minute to tear it out again, so it's no big deal. Okay, so we finished putting the basting stitches around it, so we're ready to sew Mickey out. Remember a minute ago I showed you this button down here that you can hit that will allow you to skip through your stitches? Remember I told you that if you have a smaller machine, you're going to have a picture of a spool after you hit that emblem. You want to hit the spool if you want to skip through colors. The next color is white. But what I want to do is I want to sew Mickey Mouse all in black as almost like red work or an outline art. So I want to skip through the the um, the flesh tones and the whites and the and the pink in his mouth. So I'm going to hit this, and there's his face right there. 
and there's his mouth. And if I say OK here, you can see here, here's each one of the color stops and the machine will actually stop and tell you to rethread every time you finish a color and then you can put the next color in there. It's very easy to do and it doesn't take very long. This machine is actually telling me that this is going to take 18 minutes to sew the entire thing out and it has 11 color changes in it. I don't want to do that. I want to skip through this. That's why I'm hitting this button and I'm hitting this button and I'm skipping through the mouth part and now I'm to the part that's all black that's just the last outline of Mickey Mouse. You can do that anytime. It's your um, design and if you just wanted to put an outline of Mickey Mouse on a white blouse you can do that and it comes out really cute. I've done it quite a few times. So now what I want to do is I just want to say okay and I want to sew that part out. Okay, so I've actually already started this. Um, I did want to mention that when you've threaded your machine with the foot up and put the foot down, make sure it's so tight that it's hard to pull. It actually pulls on your needle a little bit um, before you start to sew. If you can pull that thread really easily, it's not in the tensions right. So you need to re-thread it. Make sure that it's you've got a nice tight pull on your thread. So now I'm going to hit my green arrow and I'm going to let it get started. And it's going to embroider. And then I'm going to stop it. And I'm going to come up here with my scissors. And I'm going to cut that thread out of the way. And I've got another little gob of thread right there that I want to cut. And then I'm going to push start and let it get started again. I'm going to do is I'm just going to let that go ahead and finish Mickey Mouse up and then we'll take a look at it and see what it looks like. So I went ahead and I finished up my Mickey Mouse and I'll show it to you. I think it came out pretty good. I really like um, the results. I'll go back with my scissors and cut these little threads but I want to take off this um, heat and gone. So I'm just going to take it and pull it off. It's very very easy to pull off and tear. You don't really have to iron um, most of it away. Most of it is just going to pull off. Like that. Now, I have a confession to make. I didn't think about it very much, but I marked my fabric with this purple line, remember? And that is a water disappearing line, not a uh, iron away. The friction pins have um, one that irons away and I like that one a whole lot more and I use this wash away one. And then I was thinking if I iron off this um, heat and gone, then it's gonna probably set this purple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a paintbrush and I'm gonna try and paint away this purple here and I'm glad this is just a scrap because if it doesn't work you're going to actually witness me mess up this design here so I made most of it disappear but there's some that's in his face here that's I don't know what it's going to do when I go to do this with my iron away so what I did was I had let my iron cool off and it wasn't hot enough. Now it is hot enough and now um, the heat away is actually taking this away. But it is also doing exactly what I was afraid of. It's, it's kind of setting that um, purple liner permanently on my design. Let me see. Oh no, look, that's good. It's washing. It's coming off. So if I wash this, um, my purple line will completely disappear. And 
and all of my heat and gone completely disappeared. I think I have a little piece of thread right there. It has to be cut. So, um, but you can see that my embroidery design came out really nice. I really like it without all the other colors in there. It makes a nice little Mickey Mouse design. Um, hopefully you learned a little bit about embroidery. We will try and do a few more things like how to do applique and cut work and a couple of different techniques on the channel. So keep watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, like, subscribe, and comment, and we'll see you next time.